So what I'd like to do, um, I'd like to first give you a brief overview of the College of Information Sciences and Technology at Penn State and some of the work that we're doing within our new Center for Enterprise Architecture and then transition into some of the research that we're doing around enterprise uh, value measurement and talk about some of the things that um, we've done in a study that we've uh, recently uh, conducted. And then there, there's uh, quite a bit of a follow-up um, to the slides that I have. I've submitted these slides a few months ago, and we're, we've got uh, a lot of new developments in, in the research that we're doing that I'll talk with you about today, and, that, and these developments will probably be a topic of a future webinar in the upcoming months. So let's get started. Um, College of Information Sciences and Technology is a relatively new entity at Penn State. Uh, it was started in 1999 by the state of Pennsylvania in conjunction with a corporate advisory group to form what we feel is a modern IT professional, somebody with a good foundation in business, good foundation in a variety of areas of enterprise technology. Uh, we have a lot of real-world corporate experiences ingrained in our curriculum. We have a very eclectic mix of faculty as well. We have, um, we're not um, part of a traditional academic silo. So we're not uh, part of the College of Business, part of computer science, engineering, et cetera, like you see at many institutions. We're, our stand we're a standalone college, but within our college we have computer scientists, we have folks from business schools, we have sociologists, we have psychologists, we have attorneys in our faculty. So we have a very eclectic mix of people that allow us to think about interdisciplinary programs that more traditionally siloed academic institutions would have a much more difficult time uh, pulling off. Most of the silos in academia don't necessarily work and play well together. Um, we have about 2,000 undergraduates at University Park, and we boast a 95% um, job placement rate with our graduates. As I said, we have an eclectic mix of faculty. Most of our faculty research um, around different areas around informatics, from business informatics, medical informatics, uh, legal, uh, environmental, and the list goes on and on. So we have a very eclectic mix of people doing uh, very interesting interdisciplinary research. So we'll move on. I'll hit some of these introductory slides r relatively fast. Um, our sweet spot in the marketplace has been in enterprise integration. We have one of the only undergraduate uh, enterprise integration curriculums that I know of in the country. And as a result, our students are highly sought after by industry and government. And that leads to our very high placement rates and our highest starting salaries on campus, et cetera. And it also gives us many of the underpinnings, I feel, and many of the foundational elements needed to do enterprise architecture. And I'll talk more about what we're doing in the EA area in a moment. Our enterprise architecture initiative in, in our college is about three and a half years old. Uh, I started this with our previous dean. Um, most of our faculty uh, have prior industry experience in one way or another. My, I have prior industry experience in enterprise architecture, enterprise systems, enterprise integration. And I, for the last several years, I've been hearing more and more of a call for more formalized education at all levels and more formalized research with academia in enterprise architecture. So I took the business case, if you will, to my dean uh, at the time, almost four years ago, and suggested the creation of a tier one corporate and government advisory board for enterprise architecture, A, to see if my big ideas would resonate with the broad cross-section of organizations, and I'll talk about what the big ideas uh, were here in a moment, and, and also to get the validation we needed to push these programs forward. For the corporate folks, we required a $15,000 one-time donation to be part of this group, essentially just to sit at the table. And if we could do that in the middle of the Great Recession when most folks couldn't travel down the hall without three levels of approval, um, if, if we could raise uh, money during that time, then I felt we were fairly well validated. And we ended up raising over half a million dollars, and we now have over 70 organizations from over seven countries and counting. Almost every week I get a new inquiry from somewhere in the world about the center or some of our programs. So what were the big ideas? We have four primary areas that we focus on. Uh, initially with our Enterprise Architecture Initiative, which now has been recognized as a formal research center within the university, which is a, a very big accomplishment for us. We're creating an undergraduate um, focus area in enterprise architecture. So we've segmented this large group into four working groups around these four areas. One, uh, undergraduate education. The undergraduate group has been helping us define what competencies we should be building in an undergraduate uh, focus area in enterprise architecture. 
Second, we've had a master's committee working with us within our advisory group to have a similar mission, to help set the competencies that we should be building in our new online professional master's uh, degree program in enterprise architecture. This program was just officially approved by the Board of Trustees about two weeks ago. We've been offering classes now for about a year in anticipation of approval, and now we're officially approved, and the, the interest in this program has just been phenomenal. I get a half a dozen inquiries about the master's program uh, from all over the globe uh, every week with no marketing. We haven't been allowed to market until the, the uh, program's approved. So just from the speaking I do and some of the articles that have been written about us by Gartner and others, uh, we have over 100 people enrolled in the program already with, with absolutely no marketing, so it's pretty incredible. We're also developing a portfolio of non-degree-bearing professional education courses, uh, starting with an Introduction to Enterprise Architecture self-paced online certificate program, which we've been offering now for about a year. That's at the, the lower end of the spectrum. At the upper end, we have a senior level executive education program that we do in conjunction with Gartner, and we're in the process of filling in everything in between um, as, as we um, progress our educational offerings into the future. We're, all, we're also, uh, as I mentioned, we've also launched a new research center in enterprise architecture. It's about a year old now. And we have several research streams, which I'll talk about here in a moment, that we're exploring with the research members of our center. So I, I've hit the four main areas already. I don't think there's too much more to say here. Since we started late, I'm going to go over some of these introductory slides rather fast uh, to, to be respectful of your time. So if you have any questions about any of these four areas or how to get involved in the center or what have you, please reach out to me and I'd be happy to talk with you. So some of the goals for the this coming year. Uh, the program, the master's program, as I said, has been approved. Uh, we're in the process of launching the program. The undergraduate focus area will be launched in the fall as well. Uh, the Center for Enterprise Architecture has been launched and it continues to track, uh, attract uh, interest from around the globe. I've been um, invited to speak in a number of different venues about what we're doing in the center. I spoke at the World CIO Forum this past fall in China, speaking to the Chief Architects Forum in the federal government in a few weeks, speaking at the Gartner Conference, the DOD EA Conference, the Open Group EA Conference, and and on a number of corporate engagements as well. I'll be speaking to Microsoft's uh, global meeting of their enterprise architecture professionals in Redmond in August as well. Uh, and we continue to develop this unique community. I'll talk about some initiatives that we've spearheaded that I think will really uh, are poised to make a major impact on, on the profession. Um, Michael mentioned uh, the group that, uh, that I've uh, organized called the Federation of Enterprise Architecture Professional Organizations. I'm going to talk a little bit about FIPO at the end. This group is really catching fire, and I, I think uh, it's going to do some major things over the next year or two that will really make an impact on the profession. But I'll talk about more about that at the end of the session today. So the center itself, very interdisciplinary in nature. Um, we pull up the next slide. We're, we're pulling in faculty from many different disciplines around Penn State and around the world. I've had inquiries from um, universities from around the globe about possible partnerships. There is no formal academic research community in enterprise architecture. This is not a mainstream academic discipline by any means. One of our goals is to, uh, over time, help enterprise architecture become more of a mainstream academic discipline. And to do that, uh, you really need to build uh, some type of research community um, to get that academic acceptance. So we're in the process of talking w with about 30 different um, universities from around the world in early stages of creating uh, a research community in, in enterprise architecture. We've been talking with ACM and other academic in uh, organizations about creating uh, special interest groups or SIGs within these organizations. And hopefully over the next uh, two years, you